for everyone. Oh, here we go. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tim Davenport Herbst. I'm the pastor of St. Paul Presbyterian Church. We're delighted to have you worshiping God with us this morning. Every single Sunday, because we are not physically in the same space together, we do something physical to remind ourselves that we are still connected because we are not just disembodied spirits. We are souls which are embodied. And so if you don't yet have it, I invite you to go get something that works as bread and something that works as wine or juice and prepare to celebrate communion with us. If you don't have a special area set up in your house uh, to remind you about the worship of God, I invite you to do that. Uh, you can see behind me, I have the church candle uh, that we light each and every Sunday before worship begins, as long as we remember, or then it becomes the children's sermon and we talk about it if we get halfway through the service and realize we forgot to do it. And I've got some other uh, symbols that help me uh, be reminded of our faith and being together. Uh, do wanna make sure that everyone on the COVID committee knows that we are gonna be meeting following this worship service. So just stay in this meeting and we will say goodbye to people and then we will convene as a COVID task force to talk about what's going on. And this Sunday, I am going to ask you again to uh, share some things. I'm gonna ask you to be thinking about and making plans for how you can light a candle in the darkness. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So I want you to be prepared to text me, put something into the chat box, put something into messages or email to me, put something into the comments if you're joining us via Facebook, but be thinking about how you can light a candle in the darkness. Gretchen, do you have any announcements this morning? Why, yes, I do, Tim. Good morning, everybody. I'm Gretchen Smith. I'm the director of Christian Ed here at St. Paul. And first of all, I wanted to share with you guys that yesterday in our food pantry, we served a record 272 families, making up 958 individuals. Yesterday, our congregation, with the help of community members and some other congregation, served 1% of the city of San Angelo with groceries. Well done. Um, we also got a couple hundred boxes packed and a lot, a lot of fun was had. And so um, if you are interested in food ministry and in joining, there are, there are jobs of all sizes that can be done. Also, don't forget on Monday afternoons, our youth get together for mission and dorkiness. And we will be there um, about 4.15 to about 5.30. Tomorrow, we're going to meet in the basement. And I need you to make sure that you are wearing your masks um, and that if you have anything to drink or eat, it, that, that'll take care of outside. Um, there's, there's guidelines now um, for things that are happening in the church building, because guess what? Things can start happening slowly in the church building again. Um, so if you have a, a group that is directly church function ministry related that would like to meet, um, there's a set of guidelines and there's a set of cleaning supplies and all of those things, but talk to Tim for scheduling. And all of you ladies, that means Presbyterian women will be coming up soon. We don't have it scheduled yet, but um, our fellowship hall is no longer a food pantry. And so we're going to get to fellowship again. And I am so excited about that. I miss your faces, even your mask covered faces. All right. I believe that today our um, liturgist is Don Treadwell. 
which is always an adventure. Um, so take it away, Don. But before we have Don, we do have a couple other announcements I was reminded of in some private chats and texts. So I uh, want to make sure everyone knows that uh, as we move forward with our food distribution, we're doing an awful lot. So um, we need to talk about how we continue on. We're completely out of Fellowship Hall, as we discussed. What's going to stay the same? What's going to change? Uh, it turns out Chick-fil-A doesn't actually produce enough waffle fries in the city of San Angelo for us to use their boxes for the entire project that we're doing. We need to figure out how we're gonna handle that. So this Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Central Time, we will be meeting on Zoom and you can contact um, Sarah Eckel Dalrymple or me and we will make sure you have a way to get into that meeting. It will also be in the epistle that goes out Monday or Tuesday of this week. So make sure that you sign up for that. And um, I think that's all the announcements. So now, Don, it's your turn. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to St. Paul Presbyterian Church and our worship service to God. Uh, I am Don Treadwell, the clerk of session. And uh, today is a momentous day in the history of St. Paul as we have, for the first time, co-liturgists St. Uh, Howard College has loaned us an assistant professor, Nancy Treadwell, and we are coming from her office at St. Paul where she does conducts Zoom teaching Monday through Thursday for St. Uh, for not St. but <laughs> Howard College. And she has something she wants to share with you. This is Invitation by Mary Oliver. Oh, do you have time to linger for just a little while out of your very busy and important day for the goldfinches that have gathered in a field of thistles for a musical battle to see who can sing the highest note or the lowest or the most expressive of mirth or the most tender? Their strong blunt beaks drink the air as they strive melodiously, not for your sake and not for mine and not for the sake of winning, but for sheer delight and gratitude. Believe us, they say, it is a serious thing just to be alive on this fresh morning in this broken world. I beg of you to not walk by without pausing to attend to this rather ridiculous performance. It could mean something. It could mean everything. It could be what Rilke meant when he wrote, you must change your life. Our call to worship continues from Isaiah 45. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you though you do not know me so that they may know from the rising of the sun from, and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things.
I bring you assurance of God's love. Again, of goodness by Mary Oliver. How good that the clouds travel as they do, like the long dresses of the angels of our imagination, or gather in storm masses, then break with their gifts of replenishment. And how good that the trees shelter the patient birds in their thick leaves. And how good that in the field the next morning, Redbird frolics again, his throat full of song. And how good that the dark ponds refreshed are holding the white cups of the lilies so that each is an eye that can look upward. And how good that the little blue winged teal comes paddling among them as cheerful as ever and so on and so on. As Paul wrote in the New Testament, it is by God's grace that you are saved. Join us now in the prayer of confession. Lord of glory, your presence is with us always. You lead us day by day, and we are never forsaken. Yet we let our anxiety rob us of joy and blind our eyes to your presence. You send us small miracles, but we demand larger ones. We see butterflies migrate, and instead we want to see our will be done on earth and in heaven. Forgive us, Lord. Teach us to be mindful and appreciative of everyday miracles. Give us ears, eyes to see and ears to hear that we might once again be filled with your joy. Amen. This is Carol, and this is... Hi, I'm Sandra with St. Paul. And we are still working in the office. We're trying to keep everything uh, on an even keel. COVID doesn't help us, but we're all together in this, and uh, we want everyone to know that we're still here. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Friends, each week, we have a passing of the peace that happens and it comes right after the confession because as we have been forgiven we are called to forgive others jesus tells us that if we have something against our brother or sister we should leave our gift at the altar and go on and make peace with them so i invite you to make peace whether it's with your dog or if it is with your spouse your children your friends even your enemies I invite you to let peace come into your life. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with each and every one of you. Peace be with you. And also with you, Josh. Peace be with you, Josh. No, no. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Friends, would you join me for prayer? Gracious and holy God, you have come into this world in your word. You have taken on flesh and you dwell among us full of grace and truth. You set up your tent in our midst. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never overcome it. Help us, Lord, to see your light in this place and in this time. Help us to hear your word so that as we are spoken to, as we are transfixed by your gaze, we might be changed and become not just hearers, but doers of your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Karis Elliott, and I help with the slides and music. And my favorite part is being able to read the children's sermon verses every morning. So today, well, let me get this on the screen first, and then I'll let you know what we're reading from. We are reading from Matthew 22, 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference, deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said, whose head is this and whose title? They said, answered, the emperor's. Then he said to him, them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed and they left him and went away. Short and sweet, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God, Karis. Um, I think uh, in addition to the sweet and short and sweet aspect, one of my favorite parts about this scripture is, and I feel like Sam and Charlie will appreciate this. It begins with the explanation that this is a trap. Um, you know, it's always nice when you get that preface. Um, you know, Jesus didn't get that preface, but he was wise enough to realize that it was a trap. Um, and, and, you know, one of my frustrations as we, as we go through life, I, I keep seeing people use their, use scripture and use the concepts of their faith to try to be like, oh, well, this is a loophole for this political thing or this social thing that I don't want to do. And Jesus is saying, you know what, buttercup, suck it up and do it, right? Do, do things the way they're supposed to be done. Follow the law, pay your taxes, be a decent human being. Don't try to use my father and my word and my, my story to get out of being a decent human being. Um, so that's, that's my first thought this morning. Second thoughts here. And, and Tim pointed this out a couple years ago, and it is something I'd actually never, never connected with the scripture. When God, when Jesus says, you know, whose face is on this coin? give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God. Do you remember back in the beginning whose image we're made in? We're made in the image of God. My friends, you are made in the image of God. Give to God what is God's. Know who your God is. Know you who belong to. Know that you need to be where you belong, right? In a bit, Tim is going to talk about getting through the hard times, the times when it looks like there is nothing ahead. And I was like, oh, I know how to do that. For one, it's all I seem to ever do, but it, it's a really simple trick. You pick up one foot and you put it in front of the other one and then you shift your weight forward. And then you pick up that other foot and you shift your weight forward again. And you just keep going until you're somebody else, somewhere else, right? Or somebody else too. You can't, you can't get where you're going if you just stay where you are, right? So keep moving. It's also harder to, you know, hit a moving target, right? But I want to remind you that as we talk about giving to God what is God's, what else is God's? Control of the universe, right? God gets to decide what's going to happen. God's going to get going to decide how this whole thing is going to work out. So in a, in a way I'd not, never quite imagined when reading the scripture in the past, I want you to think about how giving to God what is God's means letting go of some of your anxieties and fears and worries and the things we freak out about and the things that we think that if I don't take care of this right now, the world's going to end. Because part of what is God's is control of the universe. Um, there's a song that I used to sing in my church group in college about there is a God, he is alive, in him we live and we survive. 
from dust our God created man, there is a God, the great I am. And we used to change it to sing, there is a God and I'm not him, right? My friends, let go, take a deep breath. It's gonna be all right. God is in his heaven and all is right in the world. Pray with me, my friends. Father, mother, dearest parent God who loves all the children of the world, even the ones in whose face we cannot see your image. It is so comforting to know that we are in your hands. It is comforting to know that we are your children, that, that you hold us, that you love us, that you care about us. Help us to let go of the things we need to get, let go of and keep moving at those times when we want to just stop and give up and despair. Help us to always know that the foundation of our very fiber of our being is that we are the children you made out of clay. God, we love you. Help us to know that we are loved. Amen. Good morning, good morning. Thank you, Gretchen. This is Bernie Coffee from St. Paul. I'm one of the elders and it is just wonderful to always hear and know that because God is control, even when we're not sure, we can still say, this is a day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Please join me in our second scripture this morning. We'll be doing Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God.
Friends, I've been asked to let you know, in case you haven't seen it in the chat box, that, um, and I quote, Facebook Zoom is being stupid this morning. So uh, what that means in this case is that we have a, a problem where they are sending out all the pictures that are currently on the screen rather than just whoever spotlighted. So if that is a problem for you, please feel free to turn off your camera at the same time. It's lovely to see people uh, being present there. Looks like they may be fixing it. Um, so this is not unusual, right? Because this is what we could say, hey, guess what? It's 2020, something new went wrong, right? So this whole passage from scripture starts off with the assumption that things are not going right. You might not immediately catch that because it starts off so positively, but it starts off saying, oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. And this is something that happens only if and when things that have been going badly start to be perceived as going better. Singing a new song to God is something that happens when things have a turn for the better. And so in the midst of the chaos of their lives, the psalmist is saying right here, it's going to be okay. It really is going to be okay. Don't worry about it. Back to what we have said before, God is in his heaven, and in a very real way, all is right with the world. And how can you say that, right? Have you met 2020? Think about what these people were going through. This, this song, this psalm was probably composed around the time that people were being taken from in, uh, in Jerusalem to captivity in Babylon, they were being deported, the temple had been destroyed, and as their theology thought at that time, that was the only place on earth where God actually physically was. And so it was to lose the actual house of God, the actual presence of God in this world. Most of us haven't gotten quite to the point where we're willing to say, God's given up on us as much as it looks like maybe God has with this year. But those folks, if anyone had a reason, would have had a reason to think that. So in the midst of all of this, where things are going badly, God's people write a new song and they say, oh, sing to the Lord a new song. And the, the idea is that God's reign has started to appear. God's reign is coming. It's being present. It's being made manifest, even in the midst of all the chaos and all the bad and all the evil. And those are three very different things, because not everything that's bad is evil, right? Not everything that's evil is chaotic. Not everything that's chaotic is truly bad. But we have a storm of that this year, just like they had a storm of that back in Babylon. We can listen to what they are saying in the midst of this. And it goes down to a basic faith assumption. The faith assumption is this. The thing that is real in this world is the presence and the reign of God. That's the true reality. 
because we look at stuff and we have to figure out what is representative of what's really going on. So is it an anomaly when things go right or is it normative? Is it normative when things go badly or is it an anomaly? And this Psalm is saying very clearly that the way this world is and works, what is appearing is goodness, it's order, it's love, and it is life. This is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is what's really true. This is what can be seen and can be known. This is the deep reality. And we don't have to just say, you know, I'm going to be a Pollyanna and think this. This is all about what does our faith tell us? Because our faith is how we interpret the world. How do we make sense of all of this? In John chapter one, when it talks about Jesus coming into the world, it says, the light has shined in the darkness and the darkness will never overcome it. Another translation is cannot understand it. The darkness can't understand the light. The darkness cannot overcome the light. This is what I choose to believe to be true. This is a bedrock of my faith. Crucifixion is real, but it is not final. Bad is real, but it is not final. The true finality is found in the resurrection. That's what everything is ultimately aimed towards. Now, this saying that we've all heard once upon a time in one place or another, actually in the original went like this. Denunciatory rhetoric is so much easier and cheaper than good works and proves a popular temptation yet it is far better to light the candle than to curse the darkness. That was written by William Watkinson, 1907, and first sent off to China, actually, in a collection of sermons, which is why a lot of people ascribe it to Confucius. It's not Confucius. It's a Methodist preacher who said it is better to light a candle than curse the darkness. And if you didn't quite catch his first sentence, it was essentially saying that it's understandable and it's popular and it is enticing to have what he calls denunciatory rhetoric, what he says elsewhere to be cursing the darkness, what we sometimes say to be trolling or putting other people down. It is so much easier to do that, but it is far better to light a candle and curse the darkness because the truth is not found in the darkness. When we find ourselves simply cursing the darkness, then what we are doing is letting ourselves go into that despair, that agony and fall into that. God instead invites us to join this light that is shining in the world, that is the true reality behind all things. And this is part of faith because there is ample evidence just realistically to say the truth is things are getting worse. Have you met murder, murder hornets? Have you seen fire tornadoes in the news? It's very easy to say that. Have you seen the yeah, second yeah, third yeah. wave of COVID that's coming on? All of these various things, it's very easy to look at these and to say the truth is the darkness, but that's not the truth. Our faith says that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness will never overcome it ultimately. That's the final war. We may lose battles along the way, but the truth is that the war is God's and God will be victorious. I want to invite you this week to figure out how you can light a candle against the darkness. How can you, instead of cursing the darkness, light a candle? Many of you are already doing it. I would say that voting is lighting a candle instead of cursing the darkness because you are taking a proactive way towards making our world a better place. 
if you are helping out with feeding, whether you are packing boxes, working with traffic, or doing something else like putting boxes into cars, you are feeding the hungry. We had our all time high. Almost 1% of the population of San Angelo was fed by what we did yesterday. Yes, it's true that there's unemployment and underemployment, that people are in difficult financial straits, that hunger is making a comeback and food insecurity is real. But rather than curse the darkness, we are invited, my friends, to light a candle. How about calling someone who's lonely? How about writing them a letter? How about reaching out to a new widow or widower? How about contacting a shut-in? All of these are ways in which we can light a candle against the darkness. How about standing up against racism and hurt and pain in this world? These are ways in which we, we light a candle against the darkness. And I told you at the beginning of the service today, I was gonna ask you to make a commitment. And you can write this down on a piece of paper in front of you, or you can text it to me. You can put it in the messages. Uh, that come to us, email, put it in the comments on Facebook, put it in the chat on Zoom. I don't care where it is, but I want you, each and every one of you, to think about a way in which you can light a candle against the darkness. Because the truth and the reality that comes to us is that we are entrusted with bringing God's glory into his courtyards. That's verse six of this psalm. It doesn't simply say, bring praises, give God praise. It says, bring his glory into the courtyards. The courtyards are of the temple. And where is God's temple to be found? It's you. It's me. It's all of us together. It is this world. And we are entrusted with God's glory. And that is the light that we can shine into the darkness. I want you to take a minute when we finish here and just pause, maybe during the special music, think about it. Consider how will you light a candle against the darkness and tell someone else about it so you are committed. May God add his blessings to this interpretation of his holy word. Amen.
Nancy has another poem by Mary Oliver. And uh, we both feel that Mary would have joined St. Paul if she'd ever attended one of our services. This is, I don't want to live a small life. I don't want to live a small life. Open your eyes, open your hands. I have just come from the berry fields, the sun kissing me with its golden mouth all the way. Open your hands and the wind winged clouds following along thinking perhaps I might feed them. But no, I carry these heart shapes only to you. Look how many small, but so sweet, and maybe the last gift I will ever bring to anyone in this world of hope and risk. So do, look at me, open your life, open your hands. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we put you first in our times of need, praying for healing, forgiveness, health, and protection from evil. Guide us to live the life you lived. We dedicate these gifts and our labors to further your work on earth. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, as mentioned earlier, we come now to our time of sharing in something very physical and very tangible as a sign of our connection. Although we are not close together physically, we are connected through Jesus Christ spiritually. So I invite you, as you have your communion elements, feel free to lift them up as you participate in it and as you take them and share them with folks. Turn on your camera if you feel comfortable with that and share it with the other folks on Zoom. Friends, this is God's table. He is our host and he beckons us come. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give our thanks and praise. Wondrous and holy God, it is truly right to give you thanks and praise and we worship and glorify you and we thank you that you have fed us in every single age, that you provide for us and care for us and never abandon us. Thank you, God, that you do not ever leave us orphaned. But in the midst of the most difficult times, you come into our midst through prophets 
and in the fullness of time you come into our midst through Jesus Christ. Be here now through your Holy Spirit that this bread that we break and this cup that we bless might truly be a communion in your body and blood. Unite us with you, unite us with one another. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the night on which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it in the Jewish fashion and he gave it to them saying, this cup is the cup of the new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, do these things remembering me. Josh, the body of Christ broken for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Friends, please pray with me. Gracious God, you are our host at this meal, where we remember that you have come into this world and dwell among us full of grace and truth, that you have died for us, and even more, that you have been raised up from the dead for us to never die again, to live in eternal glory and call us to you. Help us, Lord to believe in that light, which you are, more fully than we believe in the darkness. Help us contribute to that light. Help us to work to heal the world. Help us work to bring civility and kindness and goodness more fully into this world. Let our words and deeds be a symbol of your gracious presence among us. We pray these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray together. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, I invite you to commit this week to being a part of that light that shines in the darkness. Christ invites you to share with him. And it doesn't matter where you've been before, you are welcome now. Speak truth, speak kindness, speak goodness, do good, share with others, stand up for the oppressed, speak out on behalf of those who are left out. Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly, humbly with your God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.